view at home, we have many more people sitting on the sunny side than on the non-sunny side today. Yeah, trying to stay warm, but it's a beautiful day. We're glad to have you with us today. We're going to start with kids' song. Mason, you ready? Uh, he said no. He said no. <laughs> the Moreland kids and the guys at home, let's do um, If You're Happy and You Know It. Okay, don't forget to participate. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, what's next? Shout amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, shout amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout amen. Amen. Well done. Well, good morning. We're glad to have you here this morning. We are going to do a couple songs that may not be as familiar today. Hopefully those will go well enough. Uh, first one, uh, Dan introduced us to us a while back. That's why we praise him. And then Stronger, uh, we will do next. Both both are relatively new. So uh, we'll give her a shot and sing along. He came to live, to live, live a perfect life. He came to be, to be the living word of our life. He came to die, so we'd be reconciled. He came to rise, to rise, to show his power and might. That's why we praise him. That's why we sing. That's why we offer him our everything. That's why we bow down and worship his king. Because he gave his everything. Because he gave his everything. Live, live, live again in us. He came to be, to be our conquering king and friend. He came to heal and show the lost ones his love. He came to go, to go prepare a place for us. That's why we praise him. That's why we sing. That's why we offer him our everything. That's why we bow down and worship this king, because he gave his everything. That's why we praise him, that's why we sing, that's why we offer him our everything. That's why we bow down and worship this king, because he gave his everything. As he gave his everything. There is love that came for us, humble to a sinner's cross. He broke my shame and sinfulness. You rose again, victorious. Christ who lives in me. You are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me. It is risen, Christ is risen, Jesus you are Lord of all. No beginning and no end. You are 
So don't forget that there are uh, considerations to remember if you're uh, offering things up to be shared. But any praise or prayer requests this morning, Debbie? I would just want to thank them that we have some complications with this cataract surgery this week, but made it through, but it was scary. Okay. And praise the Lord. Understand. So Mark had cataract surgery this week, a couple complications, but everything seems to be good, except Mark's got the very dark goggles on. That's good. We cannot see his eyes. Any other prayer or praise requests this morning? Okay. And uh, Elsa's wife, Mary Raspberry, is going in for surgery on October 27th. Okay. Uh, she has got surgery. Okay. So, Linda, before we get too many far, Linda. Dromney called with some concerns this morning, so we'll pray for her. And Elston's wife, Mary, uh, will be having surgery, some liquid on the brain, fluid, fluid on the brain. Okay. Is there anything else, Betty? Okay. Continue to pray for Jean and Carol. Um, anything else? Okay, let's let's bow in prayer. Father, we come to you this morning, the creator of some beautiful weather, some beautiful fall weather. We we appreciate the sunshine. We appreciate the breeze. We appreciate the, the beautiful skies that you have created for us. And Father, we do thank you. But we also know that there are parts of the world that are burning and that are in flood. Um, and Father, we ask you to be with those who are in, in, that, uh, in those areas and to protect and, and uh, to guide and comfort. Um, but we do thank you for the beautiful weather that you've given us here in, in Illinois. And Father, we thank you for this church family. We thank you that we're able to be outside this morning, to be together, to worship you, uh, to be encouraged, and to hear a message, even in this uh, crazy time that we're in. And so, Father, we thank you for just for the blessings that, that have led to this day, um, even though it, it seems difficult at times. And Father, even, even in, the, in the good, there's always, there's always some struggle and some victories and, and some scary times. And Father, we, we thank you for Mark's surgery and, and how he came through that this week, even though um, it didn't go quite as, as easily as, as, as hoped. We ask you to be with Linda and Mary as they're going through some tough times and Mary uh, in upcoming surgery. We ask you to be with Jean as well. He continues to struggle with pain, which we thank you for, for who they are and their example to us, and, and Carol as she continues to care for Jean. And Father, there, there are still so many others with, with concerns, and that we ask you to just give them comfort and healing and, and love and caring. And we ask that, you, that we, as your church, also can be your hands and feet each and every day. And Father, we thank you for your love, which is, which is so much more than we can imagine, and which really is truly amazing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me. 
Because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be? That you, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. With my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you, if I'm forgiven, because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned, I'm alive and well, the Spirit is within me, because you died and rose again.
Morning, church. Morning. Hope everybody is enjoying this uh, beautiful weather that we're having. I know Sherry and I, yesterday, we went out and went hiking, uh, saw several uh, wild turkey. Uh, besides me, she saw some other turkey as well. Uh, some deer, uh, lots of squirrels and different things like that. But uh, I decided to pull out a little fall color. Uh, don't know about anybody else. Yeah, Kendall's clapping. She's like, yeah, let's bring on a little fall. I just hope fall kind of goes a long way. You know, it seems like fall and spring are kind of crunched uh, sometimes. So anyway, uh, let's just go to God in prayer. Lord, uh, I just want to say thank you so much for today because Lord Jesus, truly, uh, this is the day that you have made for us, and it is truly a gift, just like every single day is a gift. So we just want to rejoice, and we just want to be glad in it, Lord, and I pray that every single day that we get up, that we just praise you, and that we thank you for every gift of every day, regardless if it's sunny, uh, we got fallish weather today, or whether it is hot and sticky and sweaty, or whether it's uh, rainy or whatever it is, Father. Help us to look at every day as a gift, because that's what we've been talking about uh, for the last several weeks as we've been looking at Paul. Uh, we've been looking at the fact that he is on uh, your course where you want him to be, but everything doesn't go exactly great, but yet... Uh, we see your hand at work. So, Father, today I just pray that, that we will allow your Holy Spirit uh, to open our minds, to prick our hearts, to be transformed today through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's go ahead and open up to Philippians chapter 1. Um, we've been looking at the fact that i got to figure out how I'm going to do this. Yeah, maybe I can hold this with my left hand. I don't know how, how long I'm going to keep it in my left hand. But um, Paul is in prison uh, under house arrest. But don't think again that, uh, that it's easy uh, going for him because uh, he doesn't have freedom to do whatever he wants to do. Matter of fact, he's got to stay in that house two years chained to a Roman guard 24 hours a day, seven days a week for two years. Um, he is allowed to have some people to come in uh, to visit. Uh, matter of fact, he's writing this letter, a thank you note, a thank you letter to the Philippian Christians while he is in prison, chained to a Roman guard. Uh, he's got someone in there who is actually writing the letter as he dictates that letter. And we're going to see some amazing things today that God does. And I really wanted to encourage us, all of us, uh, no matter what you're going through today, no matter what your situation is like today, no matter if you're just kind of quarantined to the house uh, during this pandemic, or maybe for some of us, I know in our family, that, that pretty well we're stuck in the house because of health reasons, not just because of the pandemic, but because that's just the way that it is. And I want to encourage us not to let it cause us to sit down and to shut up. Or to maybe feel like that, you know what, I'm not really in God's plan. Because God can work all things out for his good. All things. And in every situation, he says, I can transform you to be more like my son, Jesus Christ. So when you look at Paul, how is he writing this thank you letter? And we saw last week that he's thankful for his community. He's thankful because this Philippian community, uh, they have been partners with him in sharing the good news of Jesus. And there is nothing that would help us to be energized more in the Lord and in our lives than for all of us to be involved in sharing the good news of Jesus. Amen, church? Sharing the good news of Jesus. 
So often I think we get kind of consumed with ourselves. We get kind of consumed with what's going on in my life. And, and then we, and we can get kind of depressed. I mean, it'd be easy for Paul to do that, wouldn't it? It'd be easy for Paul to be consumed with himself and to be getting depressed. And instead of writing letters of thank you and encouragement, he could be writing letters of woe is me. Or, or letters like, well, I'm a victim. Man, I can't believe it. God brought me to Rome. But man, wouldn't you know it? Here I am. I'm stuck in a, in a Roman jail. But that wasn't Paul. He was thankful that they're still preaching the good news of Jesus Christ, his community. And church, I pray that we at Northwest, that we will become a community of believers here that will be taking the good news of Jesus everywhere we go. We need to become more bold. And I pray that this will help us as we go through this together. But you know, Paul also, uh, he had the community in his heart. We talked about that last week. They were in his heart. We need to have one another in our hearts, really concerned about one another, really thinking about one another, praying for one another. And not just this community, but the community at large around us as we think about the lost. And Paul said that we are slaves of Christ. He is a slave of Christ. He is completely at the disposal of Jesus. Church, when you and I truly make ourselves completely at the disposal of Jesus Christ, then there is nothing that's going to stop us. Nothing. And so Paul says in verse 12, he says, I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, and he's talking to us too. Here's what I want you to know, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. Everything that has happened to me in Rome has happened to help spread the good news. Paul may have been stuck in that house, literally chained to a Roman guard, but that did not stop the gospel. And quarantine cannot stop the gospel, amen? Being told that we can't meet together, being told that we can't sing, being told a lot of different things cannot stop the move of God and the move of Jesus. And I believe it was one of the most discouraging things to me during this time that, uh, that I was reading about brothers and sisters and reading things that brothers and sisters, especially we're putting on social media and just listening to them talk at other times, saying, you know what, wow, we can't do anything. Hello? You can't stop the move of God. Nothing can stop the move of the Holy Spirit in God's people. And that's what Paul said. He said, I want you to know that it didn't stop me. It didn't stop me from teaching. It didn't stop me from preaching. It didn't stop the move of God. He says, matter of fact, for everyone, in verse 13, for everyone there, for everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. And because of my important uh, imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. Paul gets to Rome. All of a sudden, he's, he's chained to a, to a Roman soldier, 
a soldier that's part of the palace guard. I mean, these are the elite. These are the ones that, that protected the emperor, the Caesar. And he gets chained to this soldier. You know what? That didn't stop him. That didn't shut him up. He said, matter of fact, they even know that I'm here because of Christ. Everybody that came in to talk to Paul, they heard, uh, they, the soldier heard Paul talking about Jesus. Even as Paul was dictating this letter to be written, sent to the Philippians, guess who else heard it? The soldier. See, nothing can stop the good news of Jesus from being preached and received. The whole palace guard, everybody knew the reason that he was there. He wasn't there because he had broken some kind of civil law. He was there simply because he had preached Jesus Christ and his commitment to Jesus. And this was making an impact on these soldiers. We'll find out later. We're not going to talk about it today. But it made an impact on these soldiers. And not just the soldiers. But it also made an impact on the believers there in Philippi as he wrote this. And, and, and for others uh, that, that were in Rome. He says, as a matter of fact, it gave them boldness. It gave them confidence to speak the word of God. I, I, you know, whenever all of this started coming down here, especially in Illinois, let's say, well, all across the United States, saying that, you know what? Oh, you got to shut your churches down. You got to you gotta do this. You got to do this. You can't do that. You can't do that. How many of us got so discouraged that, that, you know what, oh, wow, I can't speak the word of God to anybody? Just stop and think about these believers in Rome. All of a sudden, Paul, he's arrested. He's sitting in a jail, chained to a soldier. Oh, wow, I guess I better keep my mouth shut. I don't think maybe I better be speaking Christ, because if I speak Christ, the same thing could happen to me. But Paul said, you know what, instead of that happening, you know what happened? Man, they became bold in speaking the name of Jesus. And church, it's time for us to get bold in speaking Jesus at our schools, at our workplaces, at Walmart. When you're getting a haircut, which I need a haircut. <laughs> no matter where you are. This is weird. I did get a haircut, I don't know, about a month, a half ago or whatever. Um, and I had a new, I had a new, uh, I had a new lady that was cutting my hair. I just go to Walmart, get my haircut. I, I, I hate making appointments. <laughs> But she did such a good job, I, I actually took her card, and I think I'm going to call her and make an appointment to get her to cut my hair again. But we were talking, and, 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 and I don't know, we were just talking about different things, and she goes, uh, number one, she goes, well, wow, you're not from around here, are you? I mean, sure, you know, we get that all the time. I said, no. And then she goes, a little bit later on, she goes, you sound like a preacher. <laughs> and I went, is that good or bad? And she goes, oh, no, it's not in what you're saying or, or that you're preaching, but your voice. you got a voice that is so calming, but yet it is so strong. You, you sound like you're, you're a preacher. And I said, well, you know what? I am. <laughs> and, and, and so we got to talk about some things together. And, and, and you know, it's amazing how God works. And I just want to encourage us today that no matter what, you cannot quarantine the gospel, church. And if there's ever a time that our world needs Jesus, it is now. And you and I, as we talked about last week with the flashlight, man, the light is going to show the brightest in the darkest of times. And we are in the darkest of times, I think, in my lifetime anyway. And it's time for us to shine. 
he goes ahead in verse 15. He says, it's true that there's some that are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry. But there are others that preach about Christ with pure motives. They preach because they love me. For they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. Are you keeping up with what's going on here? I mean, there's some that are preaching Christ because they're jealous of Paul. They're envious of Paul. They're actually putting Paul down. They're, they're speaking the, the gospel of Jesus, but at the same time, they're trying to put Paul down. So he said, they preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely, intending to make my chains more painful to me. So Rick, what would you do if that was you? Man, you know what, man, I'm in chains because I have preached Jesus Christ. And then there's some other dudes that are out here preaching now, and, and they're trying to make it harder for me while I'm in prison, while at the same time they're preaching Christ. Doing your job. There you go. It'd be easy, though, for us to maybe get angry. But you know what Paul says in verse 18? But that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I never have done this, but let's do it. I want you to say this on the count of three. It doesn't matter. Ready? One, two, three. It doesn't matter. One more time. One, two, three. It doesn't matter. We need to learn to say that. That would save so much dissension and so much division in the body of Christ if we just would simply say, you know what? It doesn't matter. See, Paul, it wasn't about Paul. Paul didn't have an ego. God's working on my ego. And I hope he's working on all of our egos. Amen? And just get rid of it. See, what mattered to Paul, he said, it just doesn't matter whether their motives are false or genuine. The message about Christ is preached either way, so I rejoice. And I will continue to rejoice. How was Paul able to make it while he was two years in under house arrest in prison, chained to a Roman soldier? Man, his heart was full of joy, rejoicing. If I were to ask you to define success for you, how would you define success? Oh yeah, man, you know, this, then I would see myself as being successful. Or if I got this, or I got that, or if I had this promotion, or that promotion, or, or whatever it might be, you know, then I would look at myself as being successful. Do you know what Paul thought was success? And what made him successful is the fact that Jesus Christ is preached, regardless of the motives, that the message of Jesus Christ is preached. That is all that mattered. Nothing else mattered. And when he saw that the gospel of Jesus Christ was being preached, even though some of the motives of some of those was impure, man, he was full of joy. He celebrated and that's why he wasn't sitting in that, in that house under arrest, discouraged and depressed. And again, he didn't look at himself as a victim. We, so many people look at themselves as a victim. But it's, it's time for us to get rid of that victim mentality. And I think many times, even us in the church, we looked at ourselves as victims. Oh, woe is me, and, and you know, oh man, I was doing this, and, and they told me I couldn't do this, or I couldn't say that, or, 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 you know, man, I was out doing this, and then somebody, man, they just bit my head off. And 
And he says in verse 19, For I know that as you pray for me, and the Spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, that will lead to my deliverance. And the deliverance he's talking about here, he's not talking about being delivered from prison. He's talking about his salvation because he doesn't know whether or not he's going to be delivered from prison alive. He doesn't know. But he said, you know what? As you pray for me, because I know that you're praying for me, and because the Spirit of Jesus Christ helping me, I know that I will be delivered from this world. I will be delivered. That's why it's important that we pray for one another. I, I remember, Betty, that uh, years ago, I, I, I gave the challenge to pray for everybody in our in our family here at Northwest. Pray, but pray for them by name, daily, and until we couldn't put the bulletin out, it was at it was in the bulletin every single week, reminding us to pray for everyone in our family every single day. Church, we need it. Do we understand the power of prayer? And the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ in us. The two go hand in hand. And then Paul says in verse 20, for I fully expect and I hope. Why? Wow, because, man, you're praying for me. I've got the spirit of Christ living in me. So I fully expect and I hope that I will never be ashamed, but that I will continue to be bold for Christ as I have been in the past. And I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ, whether I live or die. For to me, living means living for Christ and dying is even better. But if I live, I can do much more fruitful work for Christ, so I really don't know which is better. I'm torn between the two desires. I long to go and to be with Christ, which would be far better for me, but for your sakes, it is better that I continue to live. As you and I start a brand new week, and as you go out into your week with the activities that, that you may be involved in this week, the places that, that you're going to be this week, do you fully expect to not be ashamed? of Christ and to be bold for him. Do you fully expect that wherever I go, whether it's at school, at work, in the community, and I expect I'm going to be bold for Christ. I'm going to take advantage of any opportunity I have to talk about my Savior. Are you bringing honor to Jesus? Are you bringing honor to Jesus Christ in everything you do and every person that you have contact with? And I love this. Paul was sacrificing his desire to be with Jesus in heaven to stay on this earth. Now think about that, because I think most of the time we flip it. Oh, I'm going to sacrifice my life and, and, and I'll be willing to die, uh, I guess, so that I can be in heaven, you know, and then I'll go to heaven. But but I'll sacrifice being here. Paul was just the opposite. Paul was like, man, what a sacrifice it is, man. I'd rather be in heaven right now. I'd rather be in the presence of Jesus Christ right now. 
But for your sake, I'll sacrifice that, and I think I'll probably be here a little while longer. Do you have that kind of desire for heaven? Do you have that desire for heaven? Now, do you understand why Paul was in this prison, even while he was coming over to Rome on the ship with all the shipwrecks and 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 and, and the storms and the typhoons and, and everything else that was going on? Do you understand now why Paul, while he was able to, to stay focused, while he was able to, to have that peace that Jesus promised? Because, man, for me to live, and it's going to be Christ. I'm going to live Christ. For me to die, if I were to die, man, that's going to even be better. How many of you like cake? How many of you like just plain cake? You know, a lot of times, man, I can remember my mom, Sherry and I, it's only been a, couple, a few years ago when she was still living at, at her house, she would make this, this cake. And then she would bring it out, and I mean, we'd almost eat half of it, but she was making icing for it as well. But I mean, it was so good. But you know, that's the way life is. Man, life is the cake, but heaven is the icing. Man, for me to live, I want to live Christ. But man, if I die, it's just going to be better, amen? It's going to be better. Uh, I was talking about Terry Rush last week. Uh, you know, he, he lost his wife, Mary, uh, to cancer. And, and it was a, I don't know, what was it, Sherry? About a year and a half, two year battle she had with cancer, something like that. It wasn't that long, but um, the time she knew was getting close. Uh, so you listen to the funeral. Just tell me again what her daughter in law, you remember what her daughter in law asked her and then what she said? Yeah. Yeah, daughter in law asked her, Well, how are you? She goes, Awesome. Because I'm going to see Jesus. Yeah. I'm awesome. Because I'm going to see Jesus. Oh. And then this this week, uh just following Terry on uh, Facebook. Man. I mean, that guy, he's encouraging people, still encouraging people and trying to help people that are down and discouraged and, and all of that kind of stuff. And it's not that he doesn't have a low moment every now and then, but I mean, it's not about, oh, woe is me and, and uh, being a victim or whatever. I mean, you know, that's, that church, we need to learn from people like Terry Rush. Because this guy, he is the same now as he was before but so many of us we let our circumstances change us and, and discourage us and make us sour and bitter and feel like that we're the victim what does that say about christ i'm going to close out with this the last uh two verses 25 and 26 Verse 24 said again, but for your sakes, it's better that I continue to live. So knowing this, I am convinced that I will remain alive so I can continue to help all of you grow and experience the joy of your faith. Do you have joy in your faith? Are you experiencing the joy of your faith? Or do you feel like your faith is a burden? He says, and when I come to you again, you will have even more reason to take pride in Christ Jesus because of what he is doing through me.
I love the new song that uh, Aaron led us in this morning. Uh, whenever he sent it out on uh, Facebook, as soon as I, I listened to it, I, I wrote on there, oh, man, uh, that, that goes right along with the message today because it's all about Jesus. It has always been about Jesus. Amen, church? Always. And it always will be about Jesus because of what he did on that cross for you and me. So, Jesus, I just want to say thank you again for this time that we can commune together with you and with one another. And that we can honor you and think about you and thank you for the gift of your life so that we can have life. That no matter what happens on this planet to us, that we know that whether we live or die, man, it's all about you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. And for your blood, we just say thank you. You know, Isaiah talks about how we're washed whiter than snow. And your blood washes us clean. So as we drink this juice, which is representative that you told us of your blood that you gave for us. It's just a reminder that we're clean. Even though some of us, we've been out this week and we hadn't always made the right choices. We haven't always brought you honor. But Lord, we love you. We want to live for you. We want your Holy Spirit to continue to transform our lives. So we're so thankful for this reminder of your blood that cleanses us from all of our sins. Our sins in the past, our sins now, and even sins in the future that we don't even know about right now. Your blood, you promise that you will continue to cleanse us and purify us as we follow after you, Jesus. So Lord, set our hearts on fire to follow you. And again, Lord, I just pray for us as a body here at Northwest. Father, help us not to shackle the gospel. Father, help us to leave this gathering today full of your Holy Spirit. Help us to take the message of your son, Jesus, everywhere we go. God, help us to unplug our ears and to listen to the people around us, whether it's at our, our, our places that we shop, the places we do business. Father, help us to listen to people and, 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 and have the boldness to speak. It's just like the, the friend that Sherry and I have both made, didn't even know that we both had made friends, whether at Walmart with her daughter with cancer. But to let her know that we're praying for her and have been praying for her. And then yesterday or day before yesterday, talking to her and asking about her. And she was surprised that, that I still remember. And I said, oh, I've been praying for her. And now to hear that she's in remission, God, we celebrate that. And she celebrates that through you. God, just give us ears and hearts that are open and listening. And I thank you for Paul. I thank you for our brother and for the example that he sets for us and shows us how to put flesh and blood in some of these words. And I thank you for someone like Terry Rush, who continues to inspire not just me or Sherry, but so many thousands and thousands and tens of thousands all over the world. 
Father, I pray that you continue to bless him at this time with the loss of his wife and bless his family. But Father, keep him strong and protect him from the evil one. Keep his faith strong. And so, Father, we're praying for him, just like uh, those Christians did for Paul, that he'll continue to be filled with your spirit so that he can be confident of his deliverance. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for being with us today. We're going to close out with uh, just the chorus to Stronger. See if we can uh, remember a little bit more of this song as we go into this week. Twice through. You are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me. It is risen, Christ is risen, Jesus, you are Lord of all. You are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me. It is written, Christ is risen, Jesus, you are Lord of all. Amen.